hello gorgeous <laughs> I honestly cannot explain to you why every time I hit record on my podcast on this, I start laughing. Hey, 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 gorgeous. Um, if you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. Hey. <laughs> All right. So it is morning. So I'm going to say good morning, gorgeous. I'm big on manners. I grew up in Jamaican. You couldn't see people and not say good morning. So at my quote-unquote big age, when I see adults not saying good morning or even children, I'm like, who raising y'all? I have people sliding in my DM wanting things. I need this. And I'm thinking, good morning to you too. But anyway, ooh, my ears started ringing. Probably don't talk about people. <laughs> anyway, it is summer and, well, not fully summer yet, but... The weather is beautiful in Toronto as if it's summer. And I want to talk about alcohol. Alcohol is something that it is synonymous with summer because it is nice outside. You're going to be at barbecues. You're going to be at cookouts, some of you call it. Probably at other events like weddings, graduations. Um, you're going to be out with your friends in the backyard on a patio and alcohol 99.9% .9 of the time is or will be included. Now, I'm not a prude and I'm not going to tell you to give up alcohol, okay? I am going to present the facts to you and let you make an educated decision. A lot of these things that I'm going to talk about, I already knew about them, but it was like writing down, taking notes, I even started saying to myself, ooh, girl, you may want to give it up. Now, I'm not a big alcohol drinker, but I still drink. Um, I don't keep alcohol at home. But of course, if I go out with my girlfriends, if I'm at my girlfriend's house, wine is involved and more than one drinks <laughs> will be included. And I think eventually I'm going to cut that out. And once I start getting into the details of it, you're going to understand. So I am looking at my water because I already had coffee and I'm certainly not drinking alcohol while we talk about this. So let's, let's get into it. Today we're going to talk about, today we're going to talk about, um, you know, alcohol, the effects on your body, how it affects you doing perimenopause. And if you choose to drink, have one drink, two drinks, whatever amount of drinks, um, I'm going to also equip you to do it in a more responsible way. Now, before we go on, let me say um, this podcast, this episode, it's not about, it's not for anyone who has, um, who is an alcoholic, that is a serious thing. That is not the scope of this podcast. I am not equipped to assist you with that. So it's important that I let you know that. This is for the woman, the person who drinks socially at home uh, with their friends, with their spouse. So to let you know that. Okay, so we all, we all know what alcohol is, right? Right, good. That one I won't define here. Um... And most of us have alcohol at least a glass a week. Some of us even more. I have friends who drink a glass at the end of the day to relax. I have friends who only drink on the weekends. And then you have people like me who drink socially. As I said, I no longer keep alcohol at home. But if I'm with friends, if I have friends coming over, we'll get alcohol. If I'm going by them, they'll get alcohol. And... You know, as I'm saying this, I'm thinking about it and it's like alcohol, it's one of those things where it's so socially acceptable, kind of like sugar, which if you haven't signed up for my um, Kick Your Sugar Challenge, you can still do so. The link is below. We start June 17th. You still have time. Alcohol, it's one of those things where if you tell someone I'm not drinking today or I don't drink, I no longer drink, they look at you as if you have 10 foreheads as if you're speaking a whole different language or something you know it's become so socially acceptable and quote-unquote normal that if you don't drink 
people think there's a problem with you and they try to get you to have one drink. Whereas if you drink, no one ever said, oh, no more. This, this is what I'm going with this. It's one of those things where it's like peer pressure really has done its number on us. So let's talk about how alcohol affects your sleep. And remember, I just did a podcast episode, I think podcast episode 24 or something like that, where I spoke about the importance of sleep. Of course, I'm going to make sure we link it um, in the show notes below so you can check that one out. So when you drink alcohol, you're like, you may be like, oh, it relaxes me. It helps me to sleep better. I fall asleep better, faster. Yes, you do fall asleep faster when you drink alcohol, but you do not sleep better. I want you to take note of this the next time you have alcohol, if it's even a glass of wine, half a glass of wine, and notice how you sleep. Okay, so what happens when you have alcohol and you sleep? Um, It affects your serotonin level, right? So when You have alcohol, there's an increase in your serotonin level, and then your melatonin level drops. Melatonin is your hormone that is responsible for sleep. Most of us are usually drinking in the day. I'm going to go out and say, you know, we really are drinking 10 a.m. If you're drinking in the middle of the day, probably out for business or stuff. So most of us are drinking in the evenings, in the night, and at that time, melatonin which is our sleep hormone supposed to be increasing so if that's supposed to be increasing we're supposed to be going to sleep and experiencing deep sleep when we consume alcohol when you consume alcohol at night melatonin is doing the opposite it is dropping and your serotonin, which is the feel good hormone is increasing. So this is why when we start drinking, you know, we feel good. And if you've been around some people, I've, I've been to work events where people start drinking and they get a little too happy, feely, touchy. And I'm looking and thinking, this is why we ain't supposed to be drinking, especially drinking with people we work with. Like, why you feely, feely, touchy like that? But hold on that's something different (laughs) but that's what happened and then when melatonin starts to drop you don't get a good night's sleep yes you fall asleep faster but it is not deep sleep you are tossing and turning throughout the night you wake up the next morning you have a hangover you feel like crap um even if you don't have a headache and you can still function you just feel lethargic you are dragging throughout the day as i'm saying this i remember the last two times i drink once was a few weeks ago at a girlfriend's house we had wine and prior to that was at a party i went to for one of my best friends who turned 50 and on each of those occasions i had more than one drink and of course i felt nice in the night and i wasn't thinking about the consequences and the next day after each event i was literally a mess i was like i am 45 my body cannot handle this i need to i need to just stay in my lane and drink water but then oh, i'm out next time forget about it right so Pay attention the next time you drink to the quality of sleep you get that night and how you feel the next day. Hot flashes. So if you experience hot flashes, so remember hot flashes happen in the day, night sweats happen at night. So let's just say night sweats because these are probably going to happen at night. If you experience night sweats, I want you to pay attention and you also drink alcohol. I want you to start paying attention to see if you experience more hot flashes, sorry, night sweats when you have alcohol. This probably does. And even if you don't experience night sweats any other time, you may find that whenever you consume alcohol, you start experiencing night sweats. Your mind's not playing trick on you. There is a reason that happens because what happens is your body may have a hard time breaking down the alcohol, right? And then when this happens, when this happens, 
your blood vessels become dilated. So your blood vessels open wider and causes more blood to flow to your skin. Remember, your skin is the largest organ. This is how it also helps to excrete waste. So when this is happening, you're experiencing more hot flashes and night sweats. Of course, this is going to interrupt your sleep. See where I'm going with this? <laughs> See the ricochet effect it's having? We're going back to sleep. When you do not get enough sleep, of course, you feel like crap the next day. You feel lethargic. Your um, HGH, which is your human growth hormone, which helps you build muscles, that's not working because alcohol is blocking it. It's not working because you didn't sleep the night before or you didn't get good quality sleep even though you may have fallen asleep faster. Another reason I want you to pay attention and eventually reduce your alcohol consumption, depending on the amount you're having, is the effect it has on belly fat. And I'm bringing up belly fat because 90% of women who come to work with me, that is one of their issues right? They want to lose belly fat. And I'm not saying that all of you are drinking alcohol, but I'm also just saying that if you're consuming alcohol and you're also having a hard time losing belly fat, you may want to look into this and reduce the amount that you're having. So your liver is responsible for removing toxin from the body. Okay. When you have um, alcohol and also your liver helps to burn fat, when you have alcohol, what's happening is your liver is spending the time trying to get rid of the alcohol. So it's spending time trying to get rid of that. It's over, It's working overtime to get rid of the alcohol. And then what's happening to the fat? The fat's just sitting there. The fat's being stored because the liver at some point gets tired and alcohol requires a lot more to be broken down. So if your body is having a heart, if your liver is having a hard time getting rid of the fat, it just stays there. And imagine if you're having a drink every day, if you're having multiple drinks throughout the week, see where I'm going with this? <laughs> your body is storing fat as opposed to burning it. Um, of course, alcohol at this stage may also affect your mood and your energy level. Why? Because you didn't sleep the night before. Remember, sleep is important. When you do not get enough sleep, you are going to feel cranky. You're going to feel moody. You are going to feel tired the next day. When you do not get enough sleep, your body did not repair. Repair your tissues are not doing what they're supposed to do. Your brain is also not functioning properly. So you feel um, tired. What also happens is because it interrupts your sleep, the hormones that tells your body you're full and you're hungry are imbalanced. So it's like you can't get full. You feel like a bottomless pit and you're not eating healthy stuff then. You're, re you're craving salty and fatty foods, which may also lead to inflammation in your gut. And it's going to tell your body to store fat as opposed to burn it. So I hope you're seeing the ricochet effect of consuming alcohol may have on your, on your body, right? And especially during perimenopause. I like to say, any way you slice the cake, <laughs> alcohol is a toxin, right? But we've con been conditioned that it's okay. You know, it's normal to have an I I participate in it, so I'm not knocking you, but I feel that you know if we're gonna talk about menopause and certain things that also make our symptoms like hot flashes, night sweats, insomnia worse, it is important that you understand what one of these common things may do to it. So here's my take on what you should do if you're going to drink. Once again, I'm not telling you not to drink, but I am going to give you the proper tools that if you want to do it, you, um, you do it properly. So if you know you're going to be out and you're going to be drinking, hydrate, hydrate throughout the day. Don't just wait until the night off or the moment off you start drinking water. Spend the day leading up to it, hydrating a lot, hydrating a lot. Um, while you're drinking, alternate water, drink, water, 
alcohol, water, alcohol. And I know sometimes it can be challenging when you're out and you're having fun, you forget, but get that glass of water, put it on your table, have it wherever you are so you don't forget to hydrate. And the next day you still want to be hydrating because the alcohol is going to be in your system for a while. It's going to interrupt your sleep. So you still have to be hydrating the day after. Before you start drinking, make sure you've had something to eat. Hold on, not just anything. You want to make sure you are having healthy fat, the pro healthy protein, um, sorry, lean protein, healthy carbs, not just fries and burgers, because those are going to have you craving alcohol more and you're going to consume more. So you definitely want to make sure that you're having a healthy meal before. So you're kind of full and not, you know, grazing. If you go out, just think about it. I remember when I was never really a bar girl, but when I did go to a bar, just think about even now when you walk into restaurants, a lot of them at the at the bar, they'll have salty nuts and stuff like that. They have salty nuts there. The reason for that is it dehydrates you. Right, because the bar, the AC is never on. Even if it's on, there's so many people in there. It's hot. You're having the salted nuts, and now you're feeling dehydrated. You're having alcohol, which is dehydrating you more, and you're having more alcohol. You see the cycle here? So this is why I'm like, you know, when you are going to be drinking, make sure you have enough food to eat, good quality food, and you're hydrating before, during, and after. So... To recap <laughs> a few things, when you have alcohol consumption, especially during perimenopause, it may affect your sleep. And if you're already struggling with sleep, um, that may be a problem. It may also cause night flashes, night sweats. Oh gosh, sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to say hot flashes and hot um, night sweats together. Um, I don't think I mentioned this part at the beginning, but one of the reasons that it may um, cause night sweats is because at this stage, your body um, lacks an enzyme or doesn't have enough of the enzyme that breaks down the alcohol. So it's like your body's working so hard to break it down. And this is another reason why your blood vessels um, open up wider and then you experience more night sweats. And of course, it can affect your mood, energy level, and uh, how you burn or store belly fat. I will let you do with that information as you will. <laughs> I have a few events this weekend. And after recording this podcast and being reminded of some of the things, um, I'm still debating <laughs> if I'll have a drink maybe just one, but, um, take that as you will. And Hey, let me know, is this going to change after listening to this podcast episode? Do you honestly think this is going to change your drinking habits? Let me know in the comment section below. Oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> Could you do me a favor, please? Could you, um, rate and leave a review, um, on one of the episodes of my podcast? I realized that for it to go out to more people, for it to help more women, um, the reviews and the rating does help. So if you don't mind, please go ahead and do that and share this episode with a woman you know experiencing perimenopause and uh, she likes to drink. All right. Bye.